I know there's still a couple of people in the line, but as you can uh, get yourselves together, we'll get started uh, just momentarily. Well, 
Good afternoon, everyone. If I could get your attention for a minute, Megan Blado with Conference Services wants to uh, start us off with a safety minute. So if we could give her our attention. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lucy Cuddy Hall. Uh, I'm with Conference Services, and so um, we set up this facility if you're ever interested in having an event here. Um, something I would like to point out is that the restrooms are just on the other side of this blue curtain over here if you need to use those facilities. In the event of an emergency, if the fire alarm sounds or we're asked to evacuate the building, we ask to go out the front doors and then meet in the Cuddy Quad area out here. As far away from the building as we can get without tromping through the snow would be fantastic. <laughs> and uh, please remember it's icy out there, so be careful when you're walking back to your cars. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, my name is Mead Treadwell. I'm president of Commonwealth North, and uh, uh, welcome to today's program, which is the State of the University with the University of Alaska President Jim Johnson. Uh, the first thing I'd like you to, uh, to do is uh, silence your cell phones, put them on stun. Um, and I'd also like to thank our registration volunteer, Carol Anderson. Hi, Carol, uh, for, for the work you've done to check everybody in today. Now, this is a special treat for us at Commonwealth North to actually be invited away from our normal lair, which is off in the Petroleum Club or the Captain Cook, to come out here to the university uh, to show support for the University of Alaska and to hear and, and be the university's guests uh, to, to hear the plans uh, that the university has for the year to come. Uh, Commonwealth North has, uh, for a long time, advocated for a stronger higher education, stronger research, um, and we believe that that is critical today for the next generation of jo uh, students, job seekers, and employers, and in fact, I, I, I guess I'll just say for the economy as a whole. There's, there is nothing that we do in Alaska that is not knowledge-based economy. We can't dig a hole, drill a hole, float a ship, catch a fish, entertain a tourist without good knowledge and without the research that this university provides. So we're pleased to co-host this program with the University of Alaska and President Johnson's address will focus on how the university plans to meet the state's workforce needs, develop a culture in Alaska that values education, the opportunities Alaskans can access through higher education, and the importance of university innovation. I'd also like to thank you, President Johnson and Chancellor Gingrich, uh, Sam, nice to see you again, for hosting us here at the Cuddy Center. It's important for us to emphasize partnerships, a 501c3 educational organization dedicated to growing Alaska, partnering with the university system is critical to our mission. Now, you may not know about Commonwealth North. How many people here are members of Commonwealth North? Please raise your hand. All right. Now, for those of you who aren't members, this is an organization that was founded by our first two governors, 
Governor Bill Egan and Governor Wally Hickel. They were actually opposite parties. They ran against each other for governor a couple of times, but ended their lives saying that we needed a bipartisan organization in Alaska that gave solid homework to public policy challenges facing us. And I'd like to welcome you to, uh, uh, to, to join Commonwealth North to be part of our activities. We've got a number of very important study groups going on right now. And uh, you can see Jim or Ern or, or Carol at the registration desk if you'd like to join. The other thing that we're going to offer you is that as you pass by the registration desk, uh, why don't you hold up that map if you've got it. There we have a keepsake that we produced this year for the 150th anniversary of the Alaska Purchase. And that was the map that Senator Sumner used on his long speech on the, House, uh, on the floor of the Senate where it was recommended that uh, after the purchase of Russian America that we name it Alaska, and he went on to speak about the resources. That uh, 18 by 24 print is, uh, has the images of William Seward and Tsar Alexander II and signatures of the living Alaska governors. So be sure to purchase one of those maps, uh, uh, one of those keepsakes uh, 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 before you leave. And uh, I'd also like to thank our sponsor today. Uh, Bill Bishop is at the head table. Uh, thank Alaska Communications for sponsoring today's program. Uh, Bill, let me offer our organization's appreciation for the support you've given <laughs> Commonwealth North. ACS is among uh, our most generous and consistent benefactors. Uh, you house our offices, and uh, we often meet in, your, uh, in, in, in one of your communication centers with our study groups, and thank you very much for the support that you've given Commonwealth North. Yesterday we had elections at Commonwealth North and uh, uh, we have several new board members and uh, if you're a member of the Commonwealth North board, please stand. I'd like to recognize Lee Lepsher, Isaac Vandenberg, who's a brand new board member, uh, Ralph Townsend, who's a brand new board member, uh, Scott Jepson, who's returning, and Cheryl Frasca, you're, you know, I told you when you timed out on the board that you couldn't leave forever, but Cheryl, thank you very much for your support as well. At this time, let, let me introduce our head table. Uh, to my far right, to your uh, left, is Scott Jepson, who's Vice President of External Affairs at ConocoPhillips, Alaska, a university trustee and a Commonwealth North board member. Jim Johnson, who I'll introduce more formally shortly, the President of the University of Alaska. Uh, to my left, to your right, Sam Gingrich, the Interim Chancellor at the University of Alaska Anchorage. Gloria O'Neill, who is chair of the University Board of Regents and president and CEO of Cook Inlet Tribal Council. And in this small town, a former student of mine, and we raised our kids together. So uh, fantastic uh, talent in this community. And then Bill Bishop, who we uh, just mentioned, uh, senior vice president of Alaska Communications. Ladies and gentlemen, our head tables. I also just want to thank uh, Jim Hemsath, uh, program uh, co-chair, our program committee co-chair who's here, uh, and uh, Bill Pop, who's head of AEDC, an organization that we do a lot of work with, and Bill, thanks for all you and your organization do in this community. Uh, Dr. Jim Johnson. Jim was appointed to serve as the 14th president of the University of Alaska on July 28, 2015. And he brought with him thorough experience in organizational leadership and administration that has served us all in the past two years of the university and the state have faced substantial budget and policy challenges. I've personally seen the effort and progress that has been made through his proactive efforts to create partnerships with state leadership, university trustees, regents, thought leaders, and with Alaskans committed to preparing for our future and building it. President Johnson has engaged a statewide initiative to develop a comprehensive restructuring of the academic programs and administrative services of the university to align with Alaska's primary and secondary education sectors and a system-wide push to achieve the state's goal of higher attainment, 65% by 2025. Today, we're looking forward to hearing the state of the university and uh, Jim, most people know you fairly well, but uh, you know your background with Alaska 
Communications, Doyon Limited uh, in Higher Education and other roles at the University, Chair of the Alaska Commission on Postsecondary Education, Vice Chair of the Alaska Student Loan Corporation, Vice Chair of the University of Alaska Foundation, the Commissioner on WICHE, the Western Interstate Commission on Higher Education, and a member of the State Committee on Research where we got to serve together, and a member of the Board of Directors of the Alaska State Chamber of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an activist president at the university. Well, I'd like to thank you uh, all and please welcome uh, President Jim Johnson. Well, thank you very much, Mead. And thanks to Commonwealth North for uh, their co-sponsoring of this event and also my friends at Alaska Communications. Uh, I got a, a tremendous uh, education uh, at Alaska Communications and I'll forever be thankful uh, to that company and the great people uh, at Alaska Communications. So thanks for being here. And Mead, uh, I appreciate the kind uh, introduction. We've known each other a long time. Uh, Mead has been a tremendous leader uh, here in Alaska. Uh, trying to bring basically science, research, uh, and economic development together in a very, very creative way. Uh, and he's been a, an impressive leader, and I appreciate very much your service to our great state need. Thank you. <laughs> so Mead uh, is, a, is a history fan, and, and so am I. Um, and uh, so I be begin by asking the question, who would have known uh, in 1862, when President Lincoln signed the Morrill Act, which created land-grant universities, like the University of Alaska, uh, that we would become one of those great land-grant universities, indeed the number one Arctic research university on the planet. Who would have known? Who would have known five years later in 1867, again with President Lincoln there, uh, when the United States purchased Alaska from Russia, that Alaska would become the nation's largest state, playing a leading role in responsible resource development, in national security, in international transportation, and in Arctic research. Who would have known? Who would have known 50 years later in 1917 when the Alaska Territorial Legislature established the Alaska Agricultural College and School of Mines, what has become now the University of Alaska, that it would become one of the most accessible and affordable higher education systems in the United States. Who would have known in 1956 when the Alaska Constitution was drawn up at the University of Alaska, including provision for the university, that we would grow to become Alaska's largest higher education institution with nearly 30,000 students studying in more than 400 degree and certificate programs from occupational endorsements to PhDs at 15 campuses from Ketchikan to 1,342 miles away Kotzebue and online wherever they are. None of those leaders, smart, dedicated, tremendous Americans though they were, knew the many great things they were creating. But they all knew one thing. They knew that one thing really well, and that was that it takes a great university to build a great state. I'd like to acknowledge a few people right now who have contributed tremendously to this university. I want to thank uh, my, one of my bosses, uh, the chair of the Board of Regents, Gloria O'Neill, for being here. Uh, Regent Bishop is here in the room. Uh, Regent Joey Sweet, our student regent, uh, is here. Uh, the UA Foundation uh, Director, uh, former uh, chair of our board, Scott Jepson. The president of our largest faculty union, uh, Abul Bolt Ito, uh, a partner in our progress here at the University of Alaska. Thank you for being here, Abul. Uh, former Regent Sharon Ganyon, I was really pleasantly surprised to, to see her and got a nice hug. Uh, Sharon has been a leader and a great champion of the University of Alaska Anchorage and the university system uh, for many, many years. Thank you uh, for your leadership of the university in our state. So how are we doing? Uh, how are we doing at the University of Alaska in this, our 101st year? I stand here today with three strong sentiments to share with you. Uh, the first is pride. Uh, pride in our university and in Alaska. And I'll talk about why in just a moment. The second is concern. 
uh, concern for our state's fiscal uncertainty and for the terrible effects on the university of four straight years of state funding cuts and consequently reductions in our ability to carry out our mission for Alaska. The third is confidence. Confidence in our elected officials to recognize the importance of the university to our state. Confidence in our university, many faculty, students, and leaders here today, to deliver on our promise to Alaska. And confidence in Alaska, in the wealth of our land, in the grit and the diversity and the intelligence of our people, and in the future of this, the greatest state in the greatest nation in the world. So why should we be proud of the University of Alaska? I think we should be proud of this university and its unique and important mission to the people of Alaska, like no other organization in this state, providing opportunity through higher education to Alaskans to lead prosperous and fulfilling lives in a state with a competitive and sustainable economy. We should take pride in our founders, too many to name here today. One of them sadly passed away recently, Judge Roy Madsen, Alaska's first Alaska Native judge. He fostered a long line of exemplary Alaska Native leaders, decades of higher education in Kodiak, resulting from his key role in creating Kodiak College, and a culture of education through a life of learning and of public service. We should take pride in the nearly 30,000 Alaskans who study at one or more of our 15 campuses. 43% of our students, by the way, study at more than one of our universities at the same time. They're taking classes from, from multiple schools via online technology, a wonderful thing. 4,600 students, we need to be proud of them, who walked across the graduation stage uh, last spring, completing a degree or an endorsement or a certificate. Those graduates are now working in important roles in our legislature, in oil and gas companies, in telecommunications companies, in schools, in hospitals, in clinics, in mines all across this state. They are contributing to the success of their employers, they're providing for their families, and they are giving back to their communities. They are realizing their dreams all the while they're continuing to learn, and we are here for them as they continue that pursuit. We should take pride in our students. UAA's Samantha Mack, for example. Uh, Samantha is our first Rhodes Scholar in the University of Alaska's history. <laughs> A double major in political science and English, Samantha goes on now. Uh, to study political theory at Oxford. And we look forward to her success at Oxford, and uh, we really look forward to her return to the state, and hopefully to her taking a faculty position uh, at this university. Uh, in addition to Samantha, our ranks include Carnegie Fellows, Truman Scholars, UA Scholars, Fulbright Scholars. These bright Alaskans will become tomorrow's leaders with a fresh vision for new opportunities for our state. We should take pride in our tremendous faculty and staff, some of the smartest and most dedicated public servants in Alaska, who put our students first in everything they do, in classrooms, in labs, in research facilities, in studios, all across this university system. These Alaskans are doing nothing less than creating a much needed culture of education in our state. These people have worked long and hard to prepare themselves for the important roles they play at the university, and they deliver excellence every single day for our students and our state. We should take pride in our top ranking in the world in Arctic research. Now, Harvard and Berkeley are, are great universities, uh, but they have a lot of catching up to do with the University of Alaska in their understanding of the North, a part of the world growing in global importance by the day. Its people and cultures, its oceans, glaciers, mountains and rivers, its geology, its wildlife, its politics, and its economics. Our research preeminence not only brings us prestige, it draws top faculty and students. 
It brings excellence into our classrooms and labs. It returns $4 for each $1 we invest, and it solves real problems we face here in the North. We should take pride in our donors, large and small, who provide the university with the means needed to create that margin of excellence our students and our state deserve. Banks and mining companies, fish processors and oil and gas producers, transportation, telecommunications, medicine, Alaska Native corporations and foundations, all doing their part to build a great university and a great state. Well, with all this to be proud of, what's, what's, what's the problem, Johnson? What are you concerned about? Well, we should be concerned because our state since 2014 has been disinvesting in higher education and in this university. The cumulative cut in state funds has been $145 million over that period. We have today 1,183 fewer faculty and staff working at the university than we did three years ago. 1,183 fewer people serving our students and serving our state. These cuts hurt badly, but the greater impact than to us here at the university is the impact to the state and to the, our reduced capacity to serve our large unmet needs for higher education. We should be concerned because Alaska's costs for health care, K-12 education, energy, and food are among the highest in the nation. We should be concerned because of our high crime rates and our highest in the nation unemployment. We should be concerned about our extremely low, among the last in the nation, high school graduation rates, college going rates, and college completion rates. And by college, I don't just mean baccalaureate, masters, and doctoral degrees. I mean vocational and technical programs as well. We should be concerned about these numbers because they represent real people. Alaskans who will not have the opportunities for a good job and a good life for themselves and their families because of our state's low educational attainment. We should be concerned because our economy, while increasingly diverse, ranks in the bottom 10 states in the new economy index and ranks dead last among the states in improvement from 2014 to 2017. We should be concerned that the university has not received its financial support needed to take care of its buildings, its facilities. Several years ago, the state saw the need and made the needed investments. And we're very much appreciative of those legislators and other state leaders who supported that. But those funds have dried up. Uh, the Board of Regents has courageously reallocated funds into facility maintenance from other priorities. Uh, but that backlog just keeps growing. We should be concerned because while we are a land-grant university and proud of that, only Delaware received a smaller land grant than we did. Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts got larger land grants than we did. Those states are so small you can't even write their names in the state. You have to write their names out in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> this land grant deficit, ironic as it is given that our state is by far the largest state in the nation, has impaired our growth for decades and unless remedied soon, will hobble us for years to come. And we should be concerned because the businesses that require a skilled workforce are forced to hire from outside Alaska or do without, both of which cost money and constrain opportunity for those businesses, for Alaskans and for our state. So lest we despair, uh, I wanna move on, because uh, it's easy to get depressed going through that list. But I think we want to recall again what our founders knew, and it's true more today than it was back then, that again, it takes a great university to create a great state. And I'm confident there's growing awareness of that basic truth even here in Alaska and even in Juneau. So why should we be confident uh, in this university? Because its mission is to serve the state's higher education needs. That's it, simple, clear mission. While, we, while how we serve that mission is going to change and needs to change as technology changes, as our economy changes, as our students change, we will not waver, we will never waver from our commitment to that mission. 
We should be confident because the university has tremendous assets focused on that mission. Campuses, programs, facilities like this, online courses and programs, laboratories, research vessels, drone labs, classrooms, alumni, donors, faculty, staff, students, partnerships. Our partners, including many of you in this room today, come from industry and community organizations, and most important, local and state leaders in primary and secondary education. We should be confident because the university is a wise investment. For each dollar uh, the state invests in us, we generate another two. And in research, it's more like four dollars for every state dollar. Others benefit from investing in the university as well. If we are able to educate more of the state's teachers, we help our school districts reduce their annual $20 million teacher recruitment bill. If we're able to educate more healthcare professionals, we help bring down healthcare costs. The same for engineers and miners and process technicians and welders and scientists, and the list goes on and on. We should be confident because the university has demonstrated the hard way, I can assure you, that we can make tough choices. The strategic pathways process helped us determine how to structure our system in a way that would reduce our costs and more important, enhance our service to Alaskans. We've cut redundancy, reduced our statewide organization by 37%, improved transferability of course credits across our campuses, increased the number of online courses and programs. Today there are 140, I'm sorry, 104 completely online programs available to Alaskans and others across the country uh, if they choose. We've reallocated funds in order to pay for much needed facility maintenance. We've approved, improved collaboration among the campuses. Uh, Dean Barlow from the engineering school is here someplace uh, and uh, members of the, uh, uh, the engineering advisory uh, committee are here as well. Uh, those two schools, Anchorage and Fairbanks, have worked hand in hand uh, in collaboration, uh, doing a wonderful, wonderful job, starting with creation of new facilities and advocating on their behalf, uh, meeting together, uh, developing common course descriptions and all sorts of course sharing, and on and on. <clears throat> so thank you for that. I appreciate that. We should be confident because we're working hand in glove with school districts and the State Department of Education and Early Development to increase student success in our primary and <coughs> secondary schools and increase college going and college readiness. Our middle college uh, high schools, concurrent enrollment programs, RAHI and ANSEP are all represent important work in creating that culture of education in Alaska in partnership uh, with leaders in the K-12 sector. We should be confident because we're announcing this week the opening of our first business incubator, uh, the Center for Innovation, Commercialization, and Entrepreneurship. A lot of syllables there, so we're we simplify it to Center ICE. And Center ICE will be based at UAF. It's an innovation hub designed to accelerate innovation, promote economic diversification, and encourage entrepreneurialism in the University of Alaska system. The first Center ICE class will consist of five university spin-off companies and 10 individual innovators and entrepreneurs. The intellectual property produced at the university represents great potential to benefit the private sector. We're hard at work at simil on similar uh, initiatives at UAA and UAS. I recently announced the inaugural President's Innovation Challenge here at UAA. This challenge is designed to encourage students to partner with the Anchorage community and businesses to solve community problems through an innovative solution, whether it's an app or a policy or a new business. UAA's Center for Economic Development will lead the challenge, mentoring participants throughout the process, and we're excited to see what those teams create. We should be confident because we're responsible managers of the resources we receive from the state, our students, our donors, and our supporters. We have cut travel costs 32% since 2014. Our employee health care costs are the lowest among the state's major public organizations, with the lowest projected increases as well. We are investing in the maintenance of our facilities, and we're exploring creative partnerships with the private sector for future development. 
we are developing our lands, what little we have. And we're working with our federal delegation in Washington, D.C. and the governor's office here in Alaska to remedy our longtime land grant deficit. Looking forward, we should be confident because the university, led by our Board of Regents, has a plan and a supporting budget focused like a laser beam on meeting the state's needs. We are committed, as Meade indicated in his introduction, to helping Alaska meet its goal, 65% of Alaskans with some post-secondary education by 2025. Vocational, technical, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, doctorates, the whole sweep. The Board of Regents has established five supporting goals out to 2025, and we have developed strategies to meet those goals and annual metrics, 2019, 2020, 2021, all the way out to 2025 to measure our progress. Those goals are first to contribute to the state's economic development, and the ways we'll measure those are STEM graduates, science, uh, technology, engineering, and math graduates, and invention disclosures, a key predicate to commercialization of intellectual property. Providing a highly skilled workforce. Yes, we're gonna keep training accountants and managers and engineers, but we're really gonna focus on teachers and the healthcare uh, sector. We're gonna continue to lead the world in Arctic research, we're going to increase the state's educational attainment, both through increasing enrollment and through increasing our graduation rates. And finally, critically, we're going to operate more cost effectively. We're going to drive the cost per student down over that period of time. After these years of state disinvestment in the university, our ability to move these worthy goals forward is limited. That's why the Board of Regents and I are asking the legislature for a modest increase in our operating budget from this year's 317 million to 341 million, so a $24 million increment. That is still less, 10% less, uh, than the 378 million we received from the state four years ago. In addition, we're asking for renewed investments in much needed facility maintenance. We should be confident because so far this legislative session, we're getting a fair hearing in Juneau. Based on our initial meetings in the Capitol, I'm hopeful our elected officials will come together on a sustainable fiscal strategy for the state, including funding for the important and promising programs and services provided by this great university. But now more than ever, it's up to us do we as a state continue to disinvest in the University of Alaska with only negative consequences for the state? Or do we follow the lead of our founders and of every successful state and every successful nation in history and invest in our university, invest in a culture of education? I'm proud to join my colleagues across the University of Alaska. And I ask all of you to join the Board of Regents our faculty, our students, our staff, donors, and alumni in this most noble and practical cause with confidence to value education so that 100 years from now, folks will look back and they'll say, yeah, those, they had it tough back in 2017, 2018, but they invested in education. They knew it was the right thing to do. They couldn't know what a tremendous university we've built but they did know one powerful truth. They knew that it took a great university to build a great state. So I ask you to help us in whatever way you can uh, by getting in touch with your legislators. Uh, we're deep in the budget process right now uh, and letting them know how critical it is for you as a student, how critical it is for you as business leaders uh, how critical it is for you as, as leaders of foundations, uh, as of leaders of our state, as, of, as educators, uh, that we support this great university. Uh, we're all in, and I hope you are all in too. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I'm going to ask you to stay right where you are. We have uh, question cards on the table. If you'd like to send forward a question, we've got a, a few that have come forward. Uh, hold it up and uh, it'll be collected and uh, we'll go with that. But uh, uh, Jim, I guess uh, one of the first questions is on this land, uh, on the land grant issue, 
How many acres did the university get? Um, how many acres are you asking for? And what federal land pool would it come from? Uh, or what are you proposing that it come from? Is it mostly forestry lands or oil and gas lands or mineral lands? Or what are you thinking? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learned, uh, is there an econ faculty here? Um, more is better is one of the basic rules of, of economics, right? So, uh, uh, so a, a tried answer there. We got uh, 110,000 acres. Uh, we've been uh, we've received other lands over over time, and we purchased other lands. Uh, we were due 500,000 acres, uh, so you can do the arithmetic there. Uh, so, uh, over the years, uh, we have been successful actually at getting some land, but the problem is this uh, provision of our Supreme Court, of our Constitution. Uh, in 2009, the uh, Supreme Court uh, found that the uh, uh, donation of land or transfer of land from the state of Alaska to the university uh, was considered funds, and our Constitution prohibits the dedication of funds. So even though in 2005, we got a, a, a couple of hundred thousand acres from the state, uh, we act, and it was being conveyed to us uh, in 2009, based on that decision, we had to start turning it back uh, to the state. Uh, the Constitution does provide for uh, uh, grants of, of state land for participation in a federal program. Uh, so hence, uh, we are back working with our friends in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, to create a federal program. And we're in uh, conversations now with parties there and here in Alaska, what pot of lands those would come from. Um, we are certainly interested in uh, maximum economic value of those lands uh, for development purposes. Uh, so we are very responsible uh, land developers, and I would note that the proceeds of our land development fund the Alaska Scholars Program. Are there any Alaska Scholars in the room? Um, so our top 10% of our uh, high school graduates who come to the University of Alaska get a scholarship. Uh, and it's from that responsible uh, resource development that we're able to, to pay for that. And hopefully with more land over time, we'll be able to do more and more of that. Thank you. Um, the question is, why should my son go to UA and not outside to college, given the challenges you've just uh, laid out facing the University of Alaska? Well, thanks. Uh, because your son uh, will have access to 424 academic degree and certificate programs all across the state, uh, your son will enjoy a student-faculty ratio uh, that is uh, second to none for a public university across the country. Uh, your son will be able to study with tremendous faculty, uh, will be able to uh, if we'll be able to get into undergraduate research and then on to uh, whatever else that uh, student wants to pursue in life. Uh, that son is going to be in Alaska, uh, which is a tremendous place to be. Uh, the son will have the lowest tuition uh, of any state in the western states. Um, we're about 80 percent of the median tuition in the western states. Uh, so there are tremendous, in terms of the quality of what we offer, in terms of access and affordability, uh, tremendous. And also, um, depending upon what uh, your son majors in, uh, internships and opportunities to actually work closely with uh, in corporations and in other organizations, community groups, et cetera, uh, so that your son will have a, a path forward upon graduation. So those are a handful of reasons why it's a good plan. I'll have to talk talk to my son who's a student here at the university. Uh, what kinds of initiatives have been proposed to increase the diversity of faculty and students at UA and how important is multicultural education to businesses in Alaska? Well to the second question I think uh, you know businesses would say it's critically uh, important to them. Uh, I learned that in uh, very practically working at uh, Doyon Limited, an Alaska native owned corporation and uh, so diversity of that workforce and training and investment in the education of that workforce and the shareholder base in particular uh, was a, a top, top priority. Uh, within the university, we have a, a wide array. All three of the universities and community campuses have initiatives to increase uh, opportunities for Alaska Native students and to, uh, to hopefully entice, uh, entice them into the professional and graduate training needed to become faculty. Uh, here, UAA, uh, I would note, uh, just completed this past, well, a couple of months, I believe it was, wasn't it, Chancellor? A, uh, a major diversity uh, action plan uh, led by uh, Vice Chancellor uh, um, 
Brennig, uh, and she's uh, done a super job of that. And there's a task force, and uh, the, the campus here has been working with the First Alaskans Institute uh, to, uh, you know, as a facilitation to uh, figure out how to implement that plan. Uh, but we've got a really, again, working with our, our, our partners in the K-12 uh, sector, try to provide opportunities for all Alaskans, no matter where they are. Uh, and certainly a path there is multicultural education and indigenous studies, very important, no question. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, mathematics and accounting and biology. Uh, we, we really want to encourage as many Alaska Native and other uh, underrepresented minority groups uh, here in Alaska to, to continue their educations and hopefully find a place uh, at the front of the classroom, uh, helping bring others along for the future. So uh, this is a softball question, but uh, you've got your state committee on research uh, meeting tomorrow. You've got the Innovation Hall of Fame. You made a major announcement today on the Center Ice Project and the President's Innovation Challenge. What can we expect in terms of changes or contributions to the Alaskan economy from the emphasis on in innovation that you've brought about? Well, thank you very much, <coughs> Mead. I can certainly see small changes and big changes. Uh, small changes in terms of having entrepreneurial and innovation-minded students coming to work uh, in your organizations, whether they're public organizations or private uh, companies. Uh, I can see uh, bringing uh, biology students and engineering students and business students together uh, so that they're creating companies and thinking about uh, cross their disciplines, because that's where the action is, that's where the creativity lies, not typically within a discipline, uh, but when disciplines come together and, and see a problem uh, from different perspectives. So fostering that, uh, I think, is uh, critically important. These incubators that I've just uh, mentioned here, these innovations, are a first step. Uh, I've shared with, uh, with the regents and I've shared with uh, the leadership of the university uh, my vision for a, uh, a tech park not too far away from here uh, in between the you know, ANTHC, South Central Foundation, uh, Providence, uh, Alaska Pacific University, and the University of Alaska Anchorage. There's a nice powerful nexus there uh, in the UMED district. Uh, I can see something across the street from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. There's a nice 32-acre chunk uh, that would be a beautiful uh, spot uh, for, uh, for an, in, uh, uh, an innovation hub and, and really a tech park. And there's also opportunity in Juneau uh, related to the mari uh, mariculture industry. So those are things that we need to keep pushing, but it's tough to invest in those and to provide all the supports in those initiatives when you're just trying to figure out uh, where the next cut's going to come from and, and which program is going to go next week or next year. Uh, so that is, we need to really move past those, those cuts as, as quickly as we can so that we're investing in these bright and positive ideas for the future. So I guess uh, the last two questions I have were about cuts. One says with the restructuring of the College of Education and less options being offered, uh, how does the university plan to invest in the field of education? And uh, the second one has to do with what uh, students are paid. Are, are you doing something to ensure that student workers get above minimum wage? <laughs> Thanks. Well, let me take that one on uh, first. Yes, uh, we will be uh, bumping up uh, the student uh, floor, you know, the entry rate, A step, or whatever you might call it, up to the minimum wage. Uh, we've done the analysis, HR is looking at it, uh, and we will be moving that up so that we will be paying minimum wage. About 20% of our students are under 80% or above, at or above the, the minimum wage. We'll be bringing them all up to that level. So, uh, <clears throat> in terms of education, uh, I don't, I mean, we're actually stepping up investment in our teacher uh, preparation, educator preparation programs. Uh, we've made administrative changes. Uh, we are not uh, reducing education faculty. Uh, we're not reducing education programs. Uh, we are actually investing in those programs to grow those programs. What we're trying to do uh, is increase coordination and alignment of those programs across the state. Uh, but we're, we're putting a pedal to the metal on our educator preparation. Uh, programs. Uh, we're in the process now of, uh, of recruiting an executive dean uh, for that program. It'll be based at uh, the Alaska College of Education in Juneau, but there will be faculty here and in Fairbanks. There will be students here and in Fairbanks uh, preparing to be educators. So this is, uh, in my view, you may disagree with me and that's fine, there is no job more important for our state than teachers. None. They touch every single one of us in our lives. So. 
that is that is a top top priority. Thank so, you. So, Jim, does that mean if I land in a bush community, I'm going to actually meet? Alaskans teaching in the schools? Boy, that's my hope. That's exactly right. right. We have a lot of initiatives to try to help uh, bring up uh, uh, rural uh, people into teaching and Alaska Natives into teaching and Alaskans into teaching. And Mead, uh, I've got a program for you uh, six weeks in, in Juneau uh, in the summertime, which is a nice place to be in the summertime. Uh, you can do online all through the year while you're doing your student teaching and then three weeks next summer and uh, you are a fully-fledged Alaskan teacher. It's just what a former <laughs> lieutenant governor wants in six <laughs> weeks in general. Looking forward to it. Thank Thanks. you very Thank you much. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> well, let me just close by saying, first off, Jim, thank you again for your address and for uh, welcoming us out here to the university, uh, Chancellor, uh, uh, likewise. And, uh, I do want to announce that this afternoon, the University Board of Regents will be hosting public testimony from 4 to 6 p.m. So you can talk about that minimum wage or the education questions that were asked or the multicultural or the diversity questions or the innovation questions. And the public is invited to call in your thoughts on uh, university issues during the quarterly uh, testimony period. And that number, you can put it in your phone, is 866-726-0757. And with that, I'd also just like to again to invite you to join Commonwealth North. Our next uh, scheduled uh, program is March 1st at the Petroleum Club, and it'll be a, a program on the opioid crisis here in Alaska. And then we've got also very good uh, other programs uh, scheduled in our fiscal uh, work group and our energy work group and our health work group. So join up and uh, get involved. Thank you all very much for coming here today. Have a good day.